All right, folks. Uh, what we're going to talk about in this session is a technique of polynomial division that's called synthetic division. Now, I love synthetic division. I think it's very useful. I've used it in AP Calculus. I've used it in, uh, in Algebra 2. Uh, I'm sure it's useful in pre-calculus as well. Um, in fact, we're going to see how it's useful in pre-calculus. Uh, so um, it's a really easy technique once you learn how to do it, once you learn a, a couple of the rules. Uh, it's a great technique for dividing and also for identifying zeros of a polynomial. Uh, so uh, let me give you the idea here. Let me give you one of the rules first. Synthetic division, I'm going I'm to write a polynomial or a, a, a rational expression up here. Let's say that I have uh, 2, let's write it here, 2x to the third power uh, minus 11x squared plus 20x uh, minus 27 over x minus 4. Now, this rational expression can be divided. You know, this is a division problem, right? You know, when we have like 10 over 2, that's a division problem. That's 10 divided by 2. In fact, the division symbol itself is representative of a fraction, right? The division symbol is numerator dot over denominator dot. That's, that's division. Uh, so, um, you know, so 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So fractions, presumably, can all be divided into quotients. And so uh, rational expressions, since they are fractions, can presumably be divided into quotients uh, unless they are irreducible. Um, so this, basically one way of reading this is uh, 2x cubed minus 11x squared, I'm going to put a parenthesis there, plus 20x minus 27 divided by x minus 4. Th these are the, s the same thing. They're just written differently. Okay? So we're dividing here. It's a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Now, you may have already seen the video on polynomial division, and you may have already done polynomial division before. Well, this is just a special case of polynomial division. Now, you could do this, solve this problem with polynomial division, you could put x plus 4 here, and then you could put 2x to the third minus 11x squared plus 20x minus 27, and then divide your x into your 2x cubed and get uh, 2x squared, then multiply it and get 2x cubed. 2x squared times negative 4 is negative 8x uh, squared, and then do your subtraction and all that and get your, get your answer. Well, synthetic division is kind of a quicker technique than polynomial division, uh, and you'll see, you'll, you'll like it. I think you'll like it better than polynomial division. I, I sure do. But here's the thing is you might say, well, then why don't you just use synthetic division all the time? Why even ever use polynomial division at all if synthetic division is better or easier or simpler or whatnot? It's because you can only use synthetic division under a very specific case. You can only use synthetic division if your denominator is to the first power with a lead coefficient of 1. So it has to start off as 1x to the first power, and then it'll be like plus 7 or minus 5 or minus 4, plus 4, minus 3, minus 1, plus 2, whatever. Something like that, okay? So if this said divided by 2x minus 4, then I could not use synthetic division. Well, that's not entirely true, but, but I'm not going to teach you how to do it with, with a co lead coefficient other than 1. Uh, but let's say that it said 2x to the third, or just x to the third minus 4. Well, now we could not use synthetic division. We would have to use polynomial division to do that division problem. Okay, so, um, so uh, the rule is you can only use synthetic division if you are dividing by a, uh, typically it's a binomial where it's 1x to the first power and then plus or minus some constant, okay? Uh, well, let's stop talking about it and let's do it. All right, here's how you do synthetic division. Now, there's three parts to synthetic division. There's the setup, 
there's the execution, and then there's the interpretation. So I'm going to break it up into three parts. Uh, so here's how you set it up. And I have tried to write out steps, but it is so hard to word it correctly. So I'm just going to show you the three parts, the set up. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw what I call a half box. Okay, it's like a backwards L. Inside of that half box, you are going to put a number. Now, the number that you put in here is the zero of the denominator, the zero of the divisor. So um, if we took x minus 4 and set it equal to 0 and then solved, we would get x equals 4, right? Okay, so because we'd add 4 to both sides, right? And so x equals 4, so we're going to put a 4 here. So what that has basically turned into is what people eventually do inside their heads is they realize that every single time the number you put in here is that number, only it's the opposite sign. So you see a minus 4 here, so you're going to put a positive 4 in there. So if we were dividing by x minus 7, we would put a 7 in the half box. If we were dividing by x plus 5, we would put a negative 5 in the half box. Okay? So... Uh, that's a, so we, we're, starting to, we're setting up the synthetic division, and it goes much faster than this. You can do a whole synthetic division problem in like less than 30 seconds, uh, probably. So you draw a half box. You put a number in the half box that is the zero of the denominator. Then you're going to write some stuff here in just a minute, and you're also going to write some stuff here after you start. And then you're going to draw a horizontal line. So what I'm saying here is this. Is you're going to draw this horizontal line, but you have to leave enough space for two lines of numbers. Two lines of numbers. Lastly, along here in the first line of numbers, you are going to put just the coefficients with their signs. You're going to put the coefficients with their signs of the numerator, of the dividend. Okay, so... We're going to put the 2, so this is 2x to the third, so we're just going to put a 2. The next number we're going to put, we have minus 11x squared, so we're going to put negative 11. No letters, no variables, we're just putting the coefficients in here. It's one of the great things about synthetic division is you're doing polynomial division without dealing with letters at all until you're at the end. Now we've got a plus 20, so we're going to put a 20 there, and then minus 27. All right? So this is the setup. We're done setting up. So now we're going to move on to the execution. All right. Once you have your synthetic division set up, how do you do synthetic division? Well, here's what you do. I want you to remember two things. I want you to remember add and then multiply, then add, then multiply, then add. And you're just going to keep, you're starting off adding. Then, you're, then you multiply, then you add, 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 then you multiply. The very last thing you're going to do is add, and then you're done with the execution. Okay? But really, you're only going to add as many times as you have numbers up here. So we're going to add one, two, three, four times, and we're going to multiply three times, and you'll see how it goes. So the way I start off is this. Now, it's a little different than the way I learned it from other people, and it's a little different than the way I've seen other teachers teach it. But this is my way. My students have always done well with my way, so I'm going to teach it my way. Okay? Here's what I do. I always start out by putting a zero. You always put a zero under the first number. Always a zero under the first number. Then add up and down. We always add up and down. We multiply diagonally, and we add up and down. Okay, so we're going to add. What's 2 plus 0? 2 plus 0 is 2, so we're going to put a 2 right here. Then we're going to multiply, and every time we multiply, we are always multiplying by the number in the half box. Every single time, it's this, it's a, it's a bottom number times the number in the half box. So what is 2 times 4? 2 times 4 is 8, so we're going to put that, and here's where we put it. Multiply here, put it under the next number over, the next number over. 2 times 4 is 8. Put that 8 over here. So we're going to put an 8 right here. Then we're going to add again. We added, then multiplied. We're going to add and multiply again. 8 plus negative 11 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 4, we're multiplying now, is negative 12. And we're going to put it under the next number, negative 12. 
Now we're going to add and multiply again. 20 plus negative 12 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. And now we're going to add one more time, but we're not going to multiply because we're at the end. There, is no, there are no more numbers over here, so, we can't, so there's nowhere to put the multiplication. Negative 27 plus 32 is 5. Okay, So we're done. We've just executed the synthetic division. This is our answer down here. The 2, the negative 3, the 8, and the 5. That's our answer. But I have to show you how to interpret the answer. Well, the first thing that I want to tell you is this last number over here, you know how in division, like, you know, 13 divided by 2 is equal to 6 with a remainder of 1, right? So if we put 2 into 13, it would go in 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12. Minus 12 is 1, so we have a remainder of 1. Okay? Oh, yeah. So we got a remainder. I should have put a, one, a circle on it. Anyway, remainder of 1, right? Well, since we're, when you divide polynomials, you can have a remainder also. If you've done polynomial division, you see my video on polynomial division, you can see there's a remainder sometimes. Well, this number right here, that is always the remainder. The last number is the remainder. And now, here's what i got to talk about. Before I interpret this for you, I need you to understand something. We're dividing a polynomial by x to the first power, right? Well, what happens, let's ignore all this and let's ignore the minus 4. What if we just did 2x to the third divided by x? 2x to the third divided by x. What, does this, what is this going to become? Right? We got 2 divided by 1 is 2. And what's x to the third divided by x? Don't we subtract the exponents? 3 minus 1 is 2, so it's x squared. Here's what I'm getting at, is when you divide by x to the first power, your power of your d dividend goes down by 1. It only goes down by 1. So when we divide this third power polynomial by x to the first power, this third power polynomial is going to become a quadratic. It's going to become a second power polynomial. Now, do you remember also how when you set this up that you started with the highest power polynomial here, this is the x to the third. This negative 11 went with the x to the second, right? This 20 went with the x. And then this minus 27, that's, I'm going to call that c. That's called the constant. Okay, so the, all polynomials have a constant. Sometimes the constant is 0, but all polynomials have a constant. So here we put the constant here. Well, watch this. In this column, for the answer down here, this power is going to go down by 1. So this is the column for x squared for the answer. This column is going to be x to the first power. And this, instead of being an x, this is going to become the constant. Okay? So the final answer here is 2x squared minus 3x. And this is a positive 8 with no x, so it's plus 8. And then here's what we do with the remainder. With the remainder, it's positive. If it was negative, we'd put a minus, but it's positive, so we're going to put a plus. We're going to put a plus, and then we're going to make a fraction. 5 over whatever the divisor is, which is x minus 4. 5, divide, five over x minus 4. And this, so that means that this, this fraction right here, or this rational expression, okay, this polynomial divided by x minus 4 is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 8 plus 5 over x minus 4. And that's our final answer for synthetic division. Okay? All right, in the next video, I'm going to do a bunch of examples, and I'm going to let you do some examples along with me. Uh, but I just wanted to do this first video just as a beginning instruction on how do you do synthetic division.